Good afternoon, Money.net. Todd Horwitz needs absolutely no introduction. Uh, Bubba, how are you, man? Stephen, I'm great, man. It's always great to be back with you. I love this. Uh, you know, one of the things I like about you so much is that you, you're not, uh, you have no affiliations, anything going on. You just, you're your own self, you're doing your own thing. And so we just talked about it a few minutes ago. There's a lot going on in the markets. The, the apes are out of the cages again. They're going crazy again. They're so excited. Um, but you, we got to figure out what's making them so excited again. Um, and you made a good mention of this. Come November, um, we have an election coming up. Uh, it's, it's heating up here. And you made some good comments. Well, I'm going leave to leave it to you. Talk to me a little bit about what you're thinking. Well, I mean, first of all, I don't know that it is the election that's creating the the potential rally here. I mean, you know, we have, the volume sucks. OK, let's let's be frank. The volume yeah. is about as low as it's been in months, not in weeks or days, but in months. But we do have an election coming up. And, and historically, those elections turn the House to the other side. And, you know, we'll see if this is I mean, obviously, you would think if, there'd have to be something awfully funny going on if this doesn't flip over. Because if you go back to the past election for president, I mean, the the, there was they won so many house seats it's hard to believe that the president didn't hold the office so now i think you're going to see a pretty dramatic change and maybe you're seeing some rally going into this election and after the election we'll see a sell-off i but mean the economy honest, sucks yeah. nothing has honest. changed go ahead you, you you say that uh okay so as a as someone who has three college degrees in poli sci okay and modern in business management let me ask a question. I mean, you know, honestly, in history is said that, yes, there's a flip, you know, the, the, the party or the bets in the White House. Uh, Clinton lost. Uh, we lost 64 seats when I was in the White House. Uh, Bush lost seats. You know, Obama lost seats. Uh, obviously, we know that Trump lost quite a few seats. Uh, OK, but this time around, the former president is not in his poll numbers have really dropped. Um, yes, there's some problems here, but the numbers that aren't really showing it. Maybe the House flips over. And I can definitely see that. Uh, the Senate seems to be a little bit more uh, flipping, not so much flipping anymore. Uh, you know, I don't think, listen, I don't think that the Senate will flip enough to give them a major majority. I mean, the key number in the Senate is 60. OK, right. they're not going to get the 60, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them take a majority in the Senate either, though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, there's so many bad things going on. I don't know if there's really and I'm not neither a Republican nor a Democrat. I'm really a libertarian uh, down the okay. middle and I can vote either side. But of course, the guy that's in office now is about as bad as you can possibly have in okay. this particular thing. And again, whatever you think, it's like, listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion. However, I do see that you could see some flip in the Senate. I just don't think you have enough flip to get 60 seats, which is a number that that any party who wants to be in control wants to have is at 60. But I think the House will be a blowout. You, th you think the House will flip? I think the House will be a blowout. I don't, not only do I think it'll flip, I think it'll be a dramatic okay. flip because, again, You've got a lot of bad things going on. I mean, be, just you can just start with inflation. You don't have to go much farther than that. And then you can go to the power you're giving up to China. You can go to, to the, the the moronic views of, of Russia's in default, which is totally false. OK, yeah. if you really want to put Russia in default, you'd have to go back and pump oil and hurt them financially. They yes. have benefited financially from this ridiculous war that's going on right now. They sure have. All right. Well, that's a good point. I mean, I, I, the American people do like um, a divided House and Senate and White House. They like the branches split up. So they do. They've always liked that. That could be. So are you saying this could possibly be the premise of why we are pumping now? I would think it's, it's, it's listen, there's not a logical there's not a lot of logical reasons why the markets are railing. I mean, again, we look at the economy, not in good shape. If we look at inflation, not in good shape. We look at the supply chain, not in good shape. Yet markets are going higher. So it's either money is chasing the stock market, which is still in history been the best investment ever. Okay. Right. I think you might be seeing more of a retailer's rally. You know, the the, the average mom and pop buying 100 shares at a time or whatever, because that's okay. that would excuse or explain the extremely low volume that we're seeing. And maybe 
the big firms are waiting to sell when we get a little bit bigger rally. And maybe the big firms are the ones who are shorting the market on the way up, but they're doing it at a pace because they're afraid if they really step on the gas and start to sell, this market would collapse, I think. And nobody wants to collapse in the market, not even the big boys. Uh, all right, so let's talk about that. Oil just dropped to 85.40. We just went through my numbers of 85.50. I call, that's what I call it. Because of, I think backward, backwardation is happening quite heavily here in the oil markets. For those of you who don't understand, obviously Todd does, that the, the way, way out contracts are lower. The the futures spot now is a little higher. And so I, I thought that people were thinking that we oil would drop in the future. Um, that could be another thing, adding weight to this market rally. Would you not think that? I, I think so. I, I could agree with that a hundred percent. You know, again, you talk about backwardation and you talk about the other side of that, which is contango. And, Tango, you know, yeah. normally when you see the, the spot much higher or higher than usually that's a little bit of a fear factor, especially when it comes to crude oil. Because of people are afraid of demand and getting delivery and what the cost is going to be today. You know, we don't we don't think down the road. We think, how much am I going to pay today for gasoline? I, right? Not not tomorrow, just today. So I think that might listen. Certainly, that's helping. It's help. Listen, it's helping a lot of the commodity prices. It's helping the cattle markets right now. Cattle is rallying. Last I looked, and uh, you know, I think that they're higher than they should be as it is. Although I am long them, I think that they're a little bit too pricey. But I, I, I don't think they can go much higher, but certainly lower oil prices. If you just look at a family's budget, I'm paying less at the pump. I can afford to buy the steak at the grocery store. And it, it makes it also interesting for the, the cruise lines or the need, they need to you know, put the gas, the diesel, I guess, and the jet fuel now for airlines. So that makes everything a lot cheaper for everybody, maybe even lower the prices and get get the country going again a little bit. We don't, we don't lower prices at retail, boy. We, they, get, they go up. And, when's the last time Starbucks lowered prices? When you, Zero. Coffee, <laughs> you know, with the Zero. price of coffee. They only tell you when it's going up and against you. Wait to see what's happening with cotton. I mean, take a look at cotton right now. Cotton's been up limit three days in a row, and it's up it's up past the expanded limits today. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what limit up, you want to explain what limit up is, Bubba? Yeah, sure. There's there's a number assigned based on a percentage to every commodity, especially the softs, that says it can move X amount up or down on a daily basis. Once it stops, once it reaches that point, it can only go in reverse. So if we go up limit, the market can only go down from there. It can't go up any further. But if you understand and you start to learn about like the options market, you can start to see what they're really pricing in uh, going into the next day. OK, because that will give you a pretty good clue. But yep. markets move X amount and they continue to widen the limits because what they don't want to see happen is what happened with the Hunt brothers in the 70s with the, 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 the silver. And they yep. don't want to see it happen in the commodity markets because if they had the limits too tight, they locked every day and you can't they're not the markets aren't even tradable. So they keep expanding. And now if we go up limit one day, they use expanded limits the next day. So very rarely do we see a commodity lock up more in a day or two if it's locking up higher. And that's right. what we're seeing here. But they have widened them so far, it's hard to get to limit right now. And uh, lock limit up three days in a row is the most you can actually lock limit. Is that correct? Still? Yeah. And then they go to expanded limits and, and they, they listen, they expand, they expand, they expand until they get to a point where it just can't get the limit. I mean, again, there's there's only so much up. We you know, you and I have watched markets for so long. Yeah. If they go parabolic up or parabolic down, and especially in a commodity, not necessarily a stock, because stock wow. is still driven by earnings. But, you know, consumable commodities, they can only go so far before everybody says, they can't go any higher than this. You know, high prices cure high prices, low prices cure low prices. And the second thing they can do is change the margin requirements. Are you seeing a lot of margin requirements being changed now in the commodity markets? You know, Steve, they've made a big change here. You know, there's, they, they use this uh, span margin now. Margin changes every day. Yeah. Okay. It's now, it's now, it used to be the exchange was panicking, right? It was like Billy Ray Valentine. They're panicking. I feel it out there. That was that when they were starting to panic, you can see them would start to raise limits or, or margin costs because I didn't want people trading. Now right. the span margin changes every day. I haven't seen a legit raise in margin. I've seen some pull back like crude oil with the less volatility. Right now they've lowered a little bit, but this span margin is kind of automatic and it's more like an algorithm, which is obviously the way of the world now. I love it. I love it. You know, futures come in commodities have been starting to get really, really hot. Um, you think it's going to get hotter going into the wintertime for winter wheat and soybeans? 
you know, they've been selling hard into the wheat and the corn and soybean market. And I think it's, I think they're wrong. Now, again, markets are never wrong. So that's not, don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But I, you know, we, I think we got a food shortage coming. Okay. You know, we had, Brazil had a bad crop, Argentina and Australia. They all had bad crops. And we have a drought going on. What's that? We had a drought going on for a while. We have a drought and you take 30% of the world's wheat and other products out, which is in Russia, because that ain't getting delivered. Okay. Right. Well, all of a sudden, where's the food going to come from? Now, in the United States, we're not going to have a problem. We're just going to have to pay a hell of a lot more. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. You go into a, a grocery store and have to pay $10 for a loaf of bread next year. OK, so I don't I see. Repeat, I want you to repeat that one more time. How much for a loaf of bread? I wouldn't be surprised if he paid $10 for a loaf of bread. OK, I, I could see wheat Oof. exploding to the upside. You know, look, you already have food riots in where they what they call the bread basket, which is you know around the Middle East where they can't they can't produce their own wheat right. there. OK, right. so you already have that kind of taking place now. And we're not even at harvest yet. We don't know how bad it's going to be. And if the weather doesn't change soon, this they're already quoting about a 10 to 15% drop in production. We're already short coming in and the rest of the globe couldn't produce. And then again, take out another 30% for Russia and Ukraine. And all of a sudden you got a food shortage. You're going to have monster high prices, in my opinion, going here which doesn't doesn't sink in with what the grain markets are doing right now on the open board but again they're trading at such light volume it is my opinion if i have time to state this is that i think that the funds the big funds are trying to force down and they get the banks involved and what i mean by that is farmers borrow millions of dollars to produce okay right. and they're considered high risk loans so they pay over to what they're what, what the what that wouldn't any else would pay for a loan Yep. If they can push them low enough, then the banks are going to start and step in and force liquidation because the banks want to get paid. And that would send them spiraling lower in which I think these funds would come in and buy them all up and then they would go to the moon. You have a time frame on that? Uh, so I'm writing all this down. <laughs> this I, I think it's probably, you know, if it's going to happen the way I think it'll happen, if they're, if they're successful, I think it'll happen in the next 60 days. And if in the next 60 days. So mm -hmm. if someone does not have a futures account out there, uh, how would they trade this? But through ETFs then? You know, I'm not a big fan of the ETFs. You know, there's a real right. problem in the ETF market when it comes to futures. You know, you said it earlier, the backwardation and contango and the rollover stuff makes it a much bigger challenge to yep. trade ETFs. So, I mean, there's a lot of them out there, but you're not going to get the same bang for your buck. And I think that if you don't open a futures account, especially in today's world, Steve, you've got, yeah. you know, with micros and minis, you have very little risk in here. I mean, you can buy a, you can buy a mini, a mini grain future, which is a thousand bushels. You know, it's 50 cents, you know, a penny. I mean, you know, it's, it's really, sorry, it's five cents a penny. It's yeah. really very small to get involved, but you'll get paid. If you're correct, you use good discipline to get out if you're wrong. And if you're correct, you get paid for being right not where you don't always get paid in the etfs and that was always the big problem especially with the crude etfs like uso which was brutal okay and yeah. many of the others because they don't function and don't understand nor want to understand the the, the effects of backwardation and contango that happen every day so i'm writing this down so are you thinking that d suite is what's hot then that's the, the, probably d's or march you know new crop old crop you know we, we go back and forth so no, uh, but no, I think you're saying winter at first, you know, you've yeah. already seen the backwardation, you know, the grain markets are, are famous and, and the meats are famous for big backwardation and contango. And yeah, usually sure. what happens is obviously we get the, the front months run faster and then suddenly the back months start to catch up. Well, now the backs have already started to catch up. And I think actually in some cases have surpassed the front, which is telling you that there's some fear out in the future. And, and I and I think those fears are real. And I think there could be some serious problems. And I think they could also bring some serious problems, obviously, into the market, because if we have to start paying very, very high prices for other things, it's going to take away from our investing dollars. And do you also think this will affect the bean market, too, as well? Oh, yeah. Beans, again, beans are going to be right in tow. Remember, if we look at, at production, corn is the most, uh, wheat second, and then beans. So, you know, if we start to run short, it's going to be everywhere. And, and they're, they all have more than one use now. It's not just strictly food. It's oil. It's, it's all kinds of right. components that you're using here. And so you have to be very aware of what's going on around. And 
you know, as we continue to try to pro to, pro to progress forward, you know, we're short food and we, you know, your population hasn't stopped growing. Okay? Nope. But food is going to be eaten and we're going to consume. And until they come out with a pill to fill us up, we're going to keep eating. On that note, Todd, I'm going to leave it. We're going to keep eating. Um, you're, you, you know, you've got some food for thought here, uh, pun intended. Uh, when it comes down to it, um, what about the companies around it, the derivatives off of that, like ADM and Bungie and things of that nature? Are I they going to be great? I, I think, you know, again, I think ADM had some big movement. And, you know, one of, the, one of the things you have to be very careful with when you look at these companies and you really need to look at their charts and look at their, their price action is have they already assumed the move? And when it finally does come, are they going to go the opposite way? Have they overpriced themselves into these markets? And that's that's always something that you have to be very, very cautious with. And so you have to actually take a look at a chart and look at the angle or the trajectory of, of the way that something's moving. If it's, if it's going parabolic straight up, it can't. there's not much more room for it to go. I don't care what happens with anything else, right? We have to remember that markets can't function in a parabolic manner for more than a couple of days. That is typically what we call a blow-off pattern. And then it, the markets are going to have to revert back and come back to mean at some point or go sideways. And more often than not, a lot of these things are anticipated in going forward. We've heard the old story, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. And you're showing me a chart of? ADM. ADM. ADM is so pretty solid. Right. Yeah, it's been a solid run here since probably the middle of July. But if you it's look at from July until right before there, the, the 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 peak before that peak there, if you go back about eight bars, okay, you'll see that there was too parabolic. Okay, eight bars here, so you right there, right there, that green bar, that was a little bit too parabolic. So what happened? The market resolved itself by going sideways for a couple of weeks or a week, okay, and is now starting to move higher again. OK, so in my eyes, I look at that and I go, OK, this chart looks fine because it's resolved the overbought conditions by going sideways or consolidating, which is very common. The oversold conditions or overbought conditions will always resolve, usually by continuing going the other way or going sideways. And a bullish chart like you just showed me going sideways was very bullish because now we're seeing it attempt to break out once again. All right. Well, so from this conversation, I, I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to order lots of steak and uh, <laughs> bread and fill up because I probably won't be able to in December. So, Bubba, as always, man, what a, a wealth of information that you have, man. So we'll see you right back here next week, man. I appreciate it, baby. Thanks, Stephen. Have a great weekend. Have a great right, week, Tom. actually. All right, man. Bye.